Welcome to the Stogie Palace. I am your host, Chris. This one here is another TAA cigar. This is a Tatuaje. I'll show a better picture on the camera. TAA 2014. Like with a lot of TAs, not a ton of information out there on them. Um, so we're just going to go through this one together and see what it's like. Nice cocoa rich flavor there on the cold draw. Sweet kind of barnyardy and it's got a closed foot which I wish I would see that on more uh, cigars. So let's get this thing going. So the closed foot it means that the wrapper goes around the end and they kind of fold it together or tuck it in or however you want to call that and like I've said before and many others also you get just about all the flavor of a cigar off of the wrapper so the more of that wrapper the better mm. very nice start there Very good draw, <clears throat> nice smoke output. This is a six by 52 Toro. Like that ring gauge, length is a little longer than I'm used to. But this was highly recommended by a friend of mine. This was bought at a local cigar shop actually. Paid 11.69. Been sitting for a couple weeks. This is made in Nicaragua. Uh, the wrapper is Connecticut Broadleaf, which not the top of my list. So this is just made for um, members of the Tobacconist Association of America (TAA), made at the My Father Factory in Nicaragua. Only 2,800 boxes of 20 were made, and that was it. Very nice, <clears throat> nice thick smoke and smoke coming off both ends, that's good. So, really nice start. Let's keep on going, see uh, what happens. Well, about 15 minutes in, pretty decent little burn there. Great looking ash. <clears throat> nice construction there. It's a nice flavor on the dry side, but the aroma is terrific. And smoke alpha is, is, I'm gonna have to be cracking open a window here. Just got lawnmowers going, but um, this thing is smoking really nice. A little snug on the draw, but not an issue. Hmm. I haven't tried a retro yet. The smoke is just just hanging around. I, I probably need a black backdrop behind me so you can see the smoke when it does these crazy things. A little peppery there on the retro, but not unacceptable by any means. Nice smelling waft there for a Connecticut Broadleaf. A mm, little sweetness there too. Hmm. Like I said, that, that I don't seek out Connecticut Broadleaf, Connecticut at all, really. But um, this one's nice smelling though. This this has that, uh, that almost that Nicaraguan, almost San Andreas kind of sweetness to it. Really nice. You know, See how long this holds on, hopefully for a while. It looks pretty nice and tight. Just don't want it landing on me. So, let's keep going. About 30 minutes in, definitely into the second third, definitely noticed a change. Uh, see the ash? Completely different now. It was, it held on for a really long time 
and it was tight, mostly white ash, maybe a little black sprinkled in there, but uh, really held on a long time, super tight. And as soon as I tapped that off, it completely changed in the second, third. Smoke output is still pretty good. Um, it's changed a little bit as far as the thickness of the smoke, the density of it. And like I said, the ash is a little more on the flaky side, kind of spreading outward. The taste, I did get a little more, on one review I saw on halfwheel.com, which is a pretty good website, they mentioned bittersweet cocoa. Yeah, I would say that's about right. But the aroma, especially coming off of this wrapper, really, really nice. Still very good. As you can see, it's burning a little uneven there, but not, not a problem, I don't think, yet. We'll keep an eye on that. But it's just lots of nice smoke coming off and really nice aroma. Maybe a touch of cedar, can't really tell. But, well, I say, let's keep on going. And to me, for a size this size, it seems to be going kind of quick, but we'll have to see at the end how long it really goes. Forty-five minutes in, little canoeing going on there. It's starting to close around it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to catch up to it or not. But I will say though, this is, and this is a compliment when I say this, there is some complexity in this cigar. I noticed it from the first to second, but within now within the second, moving on to the third, every other puff, I'm getting something different. Um, the cocoa came back, pepper came in. Um, but the thing I noticed the most and I guess this would be chalked up to oak maybe, because to me, it tastes like um, the aftertaste you get when you drink bourbon or, or whiskey, something that was probably aged in the oak barrel. Definitely getting that, and it's, and it's nice, I'll say that. Pretty getting close to the band point, which keeps sliding down, which is good. That means it's heating up and that glue is gonna make it easy to just slide off or pull off, that's good. And as we speak, that canoe is kind of disappearing there. So that's good. I, I thought I was about to touch it up on camera. Even though this is made by uh, Pepin, it doesn't remind me of any other Pepin. It, it, it reminds me more actually of a Padron with some zest to it, some pepperiness to it. And that little island of, of wrapper is about to fall off there, so I better touch that off of there. There. So, just slight canoeing still, but not a big issue. Smoking really nice, lots of smoke. Good complexity. Definitely something I look for in a good cigar. So, let's keep on heading towards that shifting band point. Still lots of nice smoke coming off. Just about an hour in. Well, that looks like a nice tight white ash. That. And you can see that that's just, and the seam continues below that. That's just the, um, the wrapper not burning right there. So this is worthy of a touch up. Just apply a little heat, no direct flame, because I don't want any harshness. And yep, it goes up in flames really quick. Band came off super easy. I didn't end up peeling it off, and that was no problem whatsoever. Let that sit for a second and I'll show you the band, which mostly the band has the Tobacconist Association of America logo, 2014 the year, Top Tawaii. And there's a little logo on there. I'm not sure what it is. Kind of reminds me of uh, my father logo, but maybe it's Top Tawaii. I don't have my magnifying glass to really tell. But yeah, the aroma of this thing is really reminds me of San Andreas. It's not, but it sure does remind me of it. It's got that deep, 
earthy sweetness to it. It's really, really nice. And there's not much time left on this. Maybe, maybe 15 minutes. It's kind of a loose pack, which is great because it's easy draw. Not, not easy to the point of too easy. It's actually perfect. Smoke output, the burn, while uneven, it's burning really nicely. Lots of thick smoke there. Not sure how I'm gonna rate this one. Tough call, especially since they're hard to get now. Kind of like the Padron TA I had, where it was like just off the charts, terrific cigar, pretty hard to get, if not impossible at this point. Only at cigar shops. So come back, finish this thing up, come to some kind of decision on this thing. Getting towards the end here. This is a, an hour and 10 minutes in, which is for me pretty quick for a Toro for sure. Most Robustos I could go hour and a half easy and I'm probably going to get another 10 minutes out of this. So hour and 20, um, box worthy, absolutely. Hard to get in a box, definitely. But you know what else it's worthy of? That's right, my Havana saver. Cause it's one of those I really don't want to end. I've on that half wheel review, they mentioned that they stopped it because they, they're they getting some bitterness as the lights go out. And um, I didn't get that at all. It's still smelling great, tasting good too. Um, a little bit of warmth coming through, which you'd expect with only this much, but not that much. Wow, still putting off a ton of smoke. So other than those wavy burn and multiple, a couple canoes, one of them pretty big and pointy there, this is a really, really excellent cigar. Ends up with a score of, looks like I have a wiener on a stick there, ends up with a score of 96, which it reminds me of a Padron, also kind of remind me of a La Gloria Cubana Serie R Maduro, which also uses Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper if I'm not mistaken. Wow, very nice. If you can get your hands on one, you'll be uh, not regretting it at all. And once once again, that it, it reminds me of San Andreas Maduro, that nice, deep, rich, cocoa, sweet flavor on that wrapper. Terrific aroma. Good construction, except for that, you know, what you saw. But overall, a winner for sure. Of course, hard to get. But thanks, this is Chris at the Stogie Palace again with the Tatuaje TAA 2014. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.